Welcome to HC Interview. I'm Susan, one of the instructors here at PA Career Link, Lancaster County. We have several objectives for today's workshop. I want you to learn how to be prepared for an interview, understand the different types of interviews, and also identify things that ought to be avoided in an interview. When you go to an interview, an employer has specific goals and processes for those interviews. And skills are needed to prepare for that interview. We're going to help you develop skills for each type of interview and also recognize the importance of your appearance and first impressions. There are some things that are considered red flags that ought to be avoided in an interview. And we're going to identify strategies for your best interview performance and also talk about creating a personal action plan for improving your interviewing skills. Most employers use a scanning device, also known as an applicant tracking system or ATS that compares the ratio of keywords in their written job description to the words in your resume. That's the initial screening that allows them to take a large number of applicants down to a smaller one. Your resume talks about what tangible skills you have for a job, but the interview is really about defining how you respond to things how you problem solve, things that you can't really figure out from a paper. So what types of values and behaviors are those employers looking for and what makes them determine that it's been a successful interview? Well, there are things like whether or not you come across as honest. Are you a team player? Are you flexible or are you pretty set in your ways? How do you think critically or problem solve? What does your body language say that maybe your words are not? So they're looking for these types of indicators as to how you would perform on the job. And while they may ask questions to confirm information that's on your resume, the main focus of interview questions is going to be to learn about you as an individual and things that can't be learned from reading that resume. The values and behaviors listed here are definitely not an exhaustive list, but just give you an idea of the types of things employers are looking for. There is a process that is typically followed when one is seeking a new employment position. The first portion is going through the screening, and that begins, as I mentioned a moment ago, with the applicant tracking system screening your resume for a good fit. Then, if you make it through that screening, you may be called for an interview, and that could be different levels of interviews, multiple interviews for one position. And then what we all hope is that we end up with that job offer but sometimes what happens is we get that job rejection. So there are a couple things that I just wanna talk about as it relates to the interview process. Every single interview that you have the opportunity to participate in, whether it be an informational interview or a phone screening, second interview or more, these are all really valuable experiences and they add to your job search process. Part of being successful in interviewing is creating a memorable, a positive memorable experience for the interviewer. And also interviewing is a skill. It takes time. So even if your interview doesn't result in the job offer that you hope for, you're still gaining skill and preparation for that next interview. It feels like a loss when we don't get a job offer that we had really hoped for. However, the truth is we walk into an interview without that job and if we 
don't get a job offer, we're really in no different a position than we were originally. There are different types of job interviews. Most employers start out with a phone screening. Um, those phone screenings are very informational and there's some things that you want to be prepared for as you prepare to participate in that phone screening. First and foremost, you want to make sure you have a quiet environment and good phone reception. You don't want to be remembered in your phone screening for saying, can you hear me now? Make sure that you have your important documents and information close at hand. Copies of your job description that you're interviewing for, copies of the resume that you used to apply to that position, some paper and a pen to take some notes. You might even want to position a mirror near the phone. Now that may sound silly, but making sure that your face is conveying a pleasant attitude will help your voice convey a pleasant attitude. Video interviews, especially in the last several months in light of COVID-19, have become much more utilized. You want to make sure before you sit down for a video interview that you check the link and all your technology in advance, including your audio. Perhaps you would want to use headphones to minimize background noise and clarity and increase clarity. Be dressed entirely from head to toe in interview attire, even if you're only going to be seen from about the waist up. You want to be mindful of your background. What's around you? What can be seen? You don't want it to be cluttered or busy. You want the focus to be on you, not the clutter in the background. Make sure to turn off any notifications on your computer, like your email. Turn off notifications on your cell phone so that you don't have distracting noises, but also just the break in your concentration as you are aware of maybe a vibration or a notification coming in. Note your camera placement for video interview. You want to make sure that the camera is not under you so that it looks like you're looking down on the interview and you don't want to be looking too far up where your neck is tilted. You want to be comfortably looking up into the camera directly into the lens rather than at your computer screen because looking at the lens gives the appearance of eye contact for those on the other side of the screen. In a panel interview, you have multiple interviewers asking the interviewee a question. Make sure that you introduce yourself to each person serving on that panel and get their names. Write them down. If like me, you're terrible with names, Write them down on your notepad in the order in which they introduce themselves, or if it's a video interview, maybe the order in which they are listed on the screen if their names are not listed under their picture. Your body language is really important. You want to make sure that as you're answering questions, you're connecting with each person on that panel and you're addressing them individually, but being mindful that your answer is for the entire panel. You also want to think about who these interviewers are. If you know who's interviewing you ahead of time, do a little bit of research. Check them out on LinkedIn. See what might be written about them in the media. That way you can try to make a more personal connection with each individual. Once your interview is over, be sure to thank each panel interviewer and if it's in person and once it's socially appropriate to do again, give a nice firm handshake. Group interviews have a specific purpose and there are specific things that employers are looking for in a group interview setting. Things like how you work in a team, do you follow directions, who's the leader of the group, who's a follower, maybe who's a slacker. You want to be polite to everyone involved in that group interview, even if there's someone there who is really irritating you. Remember, you're being watched for specific behaviors. They want to see how you handle yourself in 
different situations. Be authentically who you are, um, but be polite. When asked a question, if you are not the first person to answer that question, don't give the same answer everybody else has given. Give a unique answer that really gets to display what you have to offer and be an active listener. Also be prepared to complete some sort of a group task, whether that be in person or maybe in a breakout room in Zoom. Uh, there will be group activities typically in a group interview. Preparation is super important for a job seeker. And in the era of the internet, there's really no excuse to not be prepared and have done some sort of research on the company you are going to be interviewing with. Here at CareerLink, we have forms that are filled out by people who have interviewed with companies so that when we send other job seekers there, we can help them be prepared to know what types of questions will likely be answered or asked, excuse me. Make sure that you have all of your interview documents with you as you prepare. Well, what does that mean? You, you want a copy of the job description. You want a copy of the resume that you used to apply for that position and also copies of your references. Study that job description so that you know it pretty well and can speak to how your skills and abilities match up with that job description. Interviewing is, is like a skill and has to be practiced in order to be proficient. And so understanding how to study a job description and be prepared with responses and practicing responses can feel a little odd at first, but will really help you to be confident and ready when interview time comes. Being prepared for the actual interview is more than just picking out your interview outfit. It's gathering all of these things that we've already discussed into one neat place, knowing how long it takes to get to your interview site, knowing what entrance you need to use, who your point of contact is, and then also being prepared to reflect after the interview about what went well or what didn't go so well. Why is it important to conduct research? Well, it gives you something to talk about in an interview. Often an interview can feel a bit like an interrogation, but what you want it to be is more of a conversation. And so having done that research gives you that competitive advantage because you can talk intelligently about the company's goals, their mission, and how it aligns with what you have to offer them and then can help you take that interview into that conversational tone. It also might help you understand a little bit more about the position for which you have applied and how it fits into the bigger picture of the company as a whole. How would you even begin to go about doing research? Well, the first thing you can do is go to the company's homepage, but don't stop there. Look up their mission statement. Figure out what their values are. If they are listed, often you can find them right there if you look around the website a little bit. What types of things are they noted for in um, the public, in publications? Can you get an idea of what their culture is like as a company? Or what their demographics are like? You know, how many men, how many women? What do other websites have to say about this company? Check out LinkedIn, look up their CEO and the key decision makers in the company to find out a little bit more than you can find out just in reading a job description. I mentioned a moment, a moment ago about making sure all of your documents are gathered together neatly. Remember, you want to be notable and remembered for a positive impression, not for being a mess and having papers all over the place. You can use a simple plain colored folder or a portfolio. We recommend that you take 
at least five copies of your resume with you into the interview. Well, why so many? That seems like a lot, but you never know who may join your interview last minute. I'll never forget one time I showed up for an interview that I had been told there would be specific people interviewing me. I brought a copy of my resume and references for each of those two people. But when I showed up, I overheard a conversation that there was actually a third individual in that interview group and I was not prepared. Thankfully, I had a friend who worked at that company who happened to walk by and agreed to make an extra copy for me. And when I got into the interview and asked if anybody needed a copy of my resume, thankfully nobody did. But um, again, I was by the skin of my teeth prepared. Better to have something and not need it than need it and not have it. If you work in an industry where having samples of the work that you have produced is appropriate, have that portfolio ready. Maybe you're in an artistic field doing marketing or some sort of artwork like tattoo artist or a hairdresser. Maybe you have writing samples or you have examples of things that you have um, revamped and redone and can show how you have added value. Make sure you have those personal and professional references with you neatly typed in their own document. These are not part of your resume. Have written down the directions to the interview site and all the contact information for the person who's interviewing you. Now you might say you don't need that because it's all right there in your cell phone and the email that they sent you. But what happens if as you're getting into the car or climbing onto the bus, your phone falls out of your pocket or your bag and right into a puddle and then won't turn on? Again, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Always have a pen and paper to take some notes and bring your photo ID and your social security card because you might wow them so much that you get a job offer right there on the spot and you want to be prepared. Having those documents ready shows that you're excited about working for that company and you were anticipating a positive outcome. It shows confidence. Studying job descriptions is something that we don't necessarily think of. You know, we read a job description and think, oh yeah, I, I think I can do that, or oh, no, I don't really think that's for me. When you find that job description that you think may be a good fit for you, you want to be looking for what are called keywords. And those are typically found in the qualifications that are required or preferred and also some of the key functions of the role. And then you want to build your responses around those key items and weave them together to create a theme that defines the brand of you. So, you know, your resume is a marketing tool, the product is you, and your marketing tool was effective to get you to the interview now you need to show that the brand of you answers the question of their needs. Link your personal values to the organizational values and make sure that you can identify and talk about your transferable skills. Those things that you used in another position that may be able to be used in another position. Talk about your experiences and how you can link them to the position you're hoping to obtain and talk about how the efforts that you have previously put forth created results for previous employers because that allows the one you're interviewing with to imagine how you would be valuable to them and offer um, great insight and value to their company. Think about um, your performance data, like three dissatisfied customers out of 100 served is actually a customer satisfaction rating of 97%. Now that should be on your resume if that's true, but make sure to discuss that in your interview. Draw attention to that accomplishment. 
I mentioned your transferable skills. So maybe in a previous position, you worked in a grocery store and you were responsible to make sure that the fish and the poultry and the meat and the fruits and the vegetables were all fresh and rotated appropriately. Those quality control skills could easily transfer from a grocery store into a manufacturing type employment situation. Continue to build that brand of how you answer their need. So if you're looking to work with a construction company and they, you know, safety is really important to them, you want to build into your brand how safety is important to you and you meet that need of their empty space. The STAR method. The first time I came across the STAR method was actually in a third round interview. I had been sick all week. It was my first day back in the office and I had to take time out of the day to go to this interview. I still wasn't feeling quite 100%, but I showed up, I was smiling and I was ready to go. The interview was a panel interview and the person in charge started the interview by introducing himself and the other individuals on the panel and said that the panel would be held in a round robin type format where they would each take turns asking me questions. And each question that I answered, they wanted it answered in the STAR format where I spoke about the situation or the task that I was trying to achieve, the action that I took, and then the results of my action. I had never heard of this before, and so I furiously wrote it down in the corner of my paper, hoping that I would remember what each of the letters stood for and that my answers would make sense. And I will tell you that it was the hardest interview I've ever had, but the most beneficial because I learned so much about being prepared for an interview and even about myself and um, some of the accomplishments that I was able to verbalize. So if you're prepared ahead of time with some answers to behavior-based questions, these are typically things like, tell me about a time when you, or tell me how you would, and then fill in the blank. So star the situation, give a little bit of background. What, what was going on? What was the task or the challenge, the problem that you had to fix? And then what action did you take? What happened? And what were the results of that action? So here's an example of answering a question using the STAR method. And this answer could answer several questions, such as, tell me about a time when you had to do more than expected to get the job done. Tell me about a time when you worked effectively in a team. Um, that sort of thing. So S, remember, stands for situation. I was part of a team working on creating a professional development training seminar for all staff at a large company where I worked. The team worked for months to create objectives and develop activities and materials. That lays the groundwork. It, it shows the situation. T stands for task. Our team leader was assigned to lead the training and facilitate the activities, but on the day of the event, they had a family emergency and were unable to attend. I had been working on my public speaking and leadership skills, so even though I felt nervous, I volunteered to take their place and lead the seminar. So we can see that the task was that this person volunteered and led the seminar. Action is the A in STAR. I quickly gathered everything I needed, encouraged my team, and reminded myself that I knew the material just as well as our leader. We continued with the training as planned, and I was able to facilitate it effectively. So we can see the action that was taken. This individual gathered the materials that were needed, encouraged the team, reminded him or herself that they were capable, and then was able to facilitate everything as planned in an effective manner. And then R is the result. 
And here they say, we received positive feedback on the training and my supervisor thanked me for stepping up and taking the lead. Three months later, I was promoted to a team lead position. So you can see not only the immediate result that uh, they received positive feedback and the supervisor was also appreciative, but a little bit longer term effect of this individual example is that this individual was then promoted as a result of their performance in this situation. There are some things that you want to avoid with STAR, and the main one being going into details that really don't matter. You want to stick to the facts, the things that are relevant to the situation, and steer clear of what you think other people's opinions were, or even if you knew what other people's opinions were. You want to focus on the facts, not opinion and then direct that story and drive it toward the positive things that you did and the positive results that occurred. So make sure that you're prepared, but you also don't sound overly practiced and monotone or robotic in your response. Yes, you wanna be prepared, but you don't wanna be a robot. Now you have a chance to give it a try. You can choose a question from the handout that you would like to answer. Uh, maybe it's one that you find particularly difficult to answer when you are in an interview situation. Then fill out a piece of paper and write down the letters S-T-A-R. And next to each letter, write that section of your story. You can share this with me by email to get feedback on your answer, it's S-C-A-Z-I-L-L-O at jobs, the number four, Lancaster.com. And again, I'll give that email address at the end of the presentation. But I want you to take an opportunity to pick a question to answer using the STAR format and then send it to me and I will give you feedback. Now, while you don't want to sound robotic or monotone in your responses, you do want to be prepared and practice responses to specific questions. That way you'll feel more confident as you go in. And one that's really difficult for a lot of people to answer effectively is tell me about your strengths or tell me about your weaknesses. You want to be able to talk about things that, um, in weaknesses specifically, that don't have anything to do with the job individually. So for example, if you are looking to work a first shift job where you have to be there at 6.30 in the morning, you don't want to say, I have a hard time getting out of bed every morning. That's one of my weaknesses. What you could do is maybe share about um, a weakness that has nothing to do with the job that you're going for. So maybe you know, you're you're looking to work in a warehouse driving a forklift and you really don't need a lot of computer skills and you can say, well, one of the areas that I'd like to improve on is in my computer skills. I haven't really had to use them a lot professionally, but I still think it's important to understand how to use technology and I'm taking classes or I'm working in metric soft skills to grow in this area. So making sure that you turn that wording around from weakness to an area you'd like to improve upon and then including what your plan is to improve on that is really a great way to answer a question about your weakness. When you start talking about your strengths, a lot of people find it difficult to talk positively about themselves. And, you know, in an interview, it is really sometimes challenging to balance your humility with projecting confidence. Um, remember that the interviewer is looking for honesty and self-awareness. So don't give cliched answers like, oh, I'm a perfectionist, because the way that really comes across to a hiring manager is that you're really not aware of your actual failings or you're not being forthcoming and willing to share them. So. Talk about the things that you are good at. Maybe you need to ask someone, hey, you know, someone you trust, uh, I'm preparing for a job interview. Can you tell me two or three things that you think are my greatest strengths? And then 
think about that feedback and how you may be able to weave that into an answer. So successful candidates are those who can align their strengths with those of an organization. Um, even if you don't plan to spend your entire career with that one employer, and in this day and age, most people don't, that's okay. Talk about how your strengths and your goals align with that employer's because your goal is to be working with them at this point in your life. And that's one other reason why it's important to do research before you arrive to the job interview. Knowing about their culture, knowing about their goals, and being able to interweave your goals and your strengths into theirs helps paint that picture, define that brand of you that answers the need that they have for a new employee. When you're discussing your, your goals, keep it professional. They are looking for what value you bring them professionally, not your goals of having a family or traveling around the world. Think about your goals and those of the company as like a Venn diagram, and you want to keep your answers in that overlapping section of a Venn diagram. Addressing difficult questions, things like short-term employment or um, having gaps in your employment, maybe why did you leave your last job? All of these can be very sticky questions. And it's really important that you remain genuine and honest, but keep things positive. So short-term employment, you know, maybe there was a good reason for that. Maybe you're a new worker or you were a high schooler or a college student. And so you could only work short spans of time over, you know, holiday breaks or summer break. Maybe you took a short term position during the COVID shutdown because you got laid off from your full time job. Or maybe you took a temp job knowing that it wasn't forever, but you needed to pay some bills. Explain your reasoning, but always keep it positive. Talk about the things that you've learned. Don't make it an issue. You want to be clear but brief. You want to show that, you know, if you have a gap in employment, you want to show that the situation that caused that gap is no longer a factor. Leaving your last job when asked, you know, why did you leave your last position? You want to be careful in answering this question. Um, it can be very difficult when we lose a job um, for any reason. And you want to avoid being negative about that previous employer. Because instead of making that employer look bad, it actually makes you look bad. Try to think about one or two really good things that you learned in your experience at that company and then share that. So maybe you had a boss that you didn't get along with and you felt like this boss was, you know, a micromanager and you could say something like, you know, I was really um, blessed to learn that I work really well independently and I can work really well with little oversight. I don't need to have someone following me around to assure that I get my work done. One of the best things I learned about myself in that previous role was how well I'm able to work without direct oversight. So turn it around for the good, share something great that you learned and keep it positive. You wanna be practiced and prepared to tell them about yourself. So you want to be able to talk about things like maybe your hobbies, your favorite sports team. Maybe you're involved in the community serving on a board or volunteering in some way to make the lives of someone else better. That's, this is a great time to talk about those things. And especially if you're able to relate it back to your professional attributes. So for example, maybe you really like to color in adult coloring books and you can say, you know, I love to color in adult coloring books because it allows me to be creative. I can visualize the colors all coming together and I find it relaxing to be so detailed 
and color within those small lines. And this is something that I would bring to the accounting manager position. I find relaxation in bringing those little details together. After this uh, workshop is over, if you email me, I will send you the AC interview handbook. And there is a list of more commonly asked questions in there. And again, you can pick one of those questions, answer according to the star format, and I'll give you a little bit of feedback. You want to have questions for the employer. They have questions prepared for you. You definitely want to have questions prepared for them. This shows them that you're excited. It shows them you're professional, you're prepared, you're interested and you're taking some initiative. But what happens if all the questions that you had prepared got answered over the course of the interview? You always want to have one or two that are somewhat outside the box uh, that you can pull out of your back pocket. Something like, tell me why you like working for this company. Or can you tell me what the greatest challenge is that's facing the successful candidate? And then, Try to answer back, you know, how you meet that need, how the brand of you answers their need. There is an etiquette to interviews, and it's really important that you know them to help you ace that interview. Know your interviewer's name. Who is your point of contact? Who's the main person you know you will be interviewing with? And arrive early at least 15 minutes ahead of time. Um, if you're earlier than 15 minutes, I would probably wait off the property until about 15 minutes before the interview. Because if you arrive on the time at the time that your interview is scheduled for, you're already late. And remember that as soon as you step onto that property or you drive onto that property, your interview is starting right then and there. You don't know who all may have some input into hiring. So be respectful, be kind to everyone you come into contact with. Be mindful of your body language as well. Make sure you're listening actively, you're being responsive. Always show gratitude to the interviewer for taking time out of their day to spend some time getting to know you. It goes a long way. So when you're getting ready to dress to impress, what type of job or what industry you're going to be working in is really going to dictate what's appropriate to wear. And so a good rule of thumb is to think about dressing one level higher than the position you're interviewing for. There are some things you want to avoid, denim or jeans being one of them. I always like to say that unless you are applying to work at Harley Davidson where their dress code actually is jeans and a t-shirt, don't wear jeans and a t-shirt to your job interview. Don't wear overly casual shoes like sneakers or open-toed shoes like sandals. And um, unless you're applying and interviewing to be a tattoo artist or do piercing, you want to cover your tattoos and your piercings for your interview. You can never really go wrong with dark pants and a white shirt. Um, some suggestions for an interview are a business suit or a business dress, having a collared shirt, uh, either a polo or a button down, nice blouse for ladies, and some khakis or dark dress pants. After your interview is over, you want to take a little bit of time to think about it. Write down as many of the questions that you were asked and what your responses were as you can think of. And then do an assessment. Assess yourself based on the notes that you took. What questions do you think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I answered that way. That was great. I want to remember that so that I say it again. Just kind of came out of my mouth. Or which questions do you want to say, oh, I can't believe I answered that way. I really need to work on a response for that because I don't ever want it to come out that way again. Make sure you send a thank you note within 24 hours after the interview. And if you're working with CareerLink, um, review this information with a staff member, get a second opinion and some insights on how to develop an action plan so that you're always using your interviews as an opportunity to improve your future performance. Are you interested in doing job interview practice? 
I want to tell you about a really great program we have here at CareerLink, and it can be done when we're in the facility. It can be done in person, but we also have a virtual online version of the Career Connections program, and it is an intense four-part instruction, and it empowers you as a job seeker to be ready to interview well. It helps you with motivation, gives you tools to help you since you have a thorough job search plan until you find employment. Some of the things that you'll do in this class are um, locating jobs in what's called the hidden job market. And if you didn't know what the hidden job market is, join this class, you'll find it. It is the best place to find a job. How to develop an effective elevator speech, how to network, and you'll have the opportunity to network with other job seekers. And also you'll be working on composing those positive responses to commonly asked questions in a job interview. They will do a mock interview with you and then review it with you and offer ongoing support with networking meetings every week and also a team of experts to guide you as you walk through the next steps of your career. We have handouts that accompany this workshop. I can send a copy of the PowerPoint, the AC interview handbook that has those behavioral interview questions, frequently asked questions, some ideas for you to ask questions of employers, and then also that transferable skills survey so that you know how to talk about your skills that you learned maybe somewhere else, but you're ready to apply with that new position. If you have questions, please email me, Susan Cazillo at S C A Z I L L O at jobs, the number four, Lancaster.com. That's S Cazillo at jobs for Lancaster.com. And I would be happy to answer those questions and get the handouts for this workshop to you. Thank you so much for joining me today. We look forward to helping you as you continue your job search.